we're gonna try this again. Maybe because How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. Please give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys have not already. Also do me the biggest favor of all, hit the bell notification button so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on the channel. And in the background, I've got my awesome brother that's gonna be hopefully trying to not comment to make noise. Um, and I do have some other friends and family members over, so if you guys hear any noise in the background, that would be them listening to a movie and just talking. So, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, hi everybody. So, here's my awesome good brother right there. Say hi. And uh, so this is going to be part one of the Chronicles of Unit 4, 5, Space Mageddon. And, um... <laughs> We're going to be hopefully dividing this book into two parts, and uh, this I ended up finishing in 2010. This was supposed to be the climactic ending of all five books. I ended up doing six and seven because people didn't like how I ended the series here with book five, and then everyone, when we got to book seven, and when we will get to book seven, everyone wanted <laughs> me to continue the story and to expand the lore, so that's why I wrote book Blug, book 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> if you guys want a copy of this book to read along with me or in your own free time, let me know in the comment section. Let me know in the comment section and I will uh, send you an email of a Microsoft Word document of this. So I hope you guys enjoy. We're going to read the intro real quick and we'll dive right into the book. Enjoy. <laughs> It was going to be a long read through with my brother in the background making faces. There we go. Unit 4 is now made up of Devin Armstrong, Deborah Armstrong, Paul Woodson, and myself. Evil returns in the fifth installment of the Unit 4 story in the form of Douglas's father and Satan. Sure, Unit 4 clear. builds a machine to bring back to life previous team members, but forgets about what Ash Becca told the team about Sam when she comes back to life. Eventually, Satan and Mr. Dave enter the universe and regroup the arm to challenge the core and Unit 4. Ash, Becca, and God Almighty join the Corps and prepare for the upcoming battle. Fear of losing is among the Corps because they know they can't underestimate evil's most powerful leader. Can the Corps and Unifor win this battle? Find out. I wonder if the Corps is hardcore. Chapter 1. The Letter. Year 2021. I, Douglas Armstrong, a man from Ash, Becca's family tree, have decided to write a letter to the seven armed planets to inform each of you of the agreement that Dr. Rice made when he was alive. Dr. Ice said that once he was killed, the planets Earth-3, Inc., Zone, Randali, Trick-In, Octomonk, and Triadad were no longer to be part of the arm. But I know you need more than just words to make you change. This letter is the truth, and please consider changing your side for your people's common good. Grace to you and peace from him who was and is and who is to come, and from the seven planets who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, he first born of the dead and ruler of kings in the universe. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins of war by his blood on earth and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and rebel against him, and all planets in the universe will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. He says that he is the Alpha and the Omega, and who was and is and is to come, the Almighty. I had a vision before the books of power destruction, and saw that Satan will rise, and those that follow in his footsteps will be defeated and cast into the fires of hell for a time of about 4,000 years. I hope that each planet will group alongside the core before God comes to the universe and places each man and creature in the judgment chair near the white throne of God. Sincerely, Douglas Armstrong, the leader of Unit 4 and Earth 2's army. Chapter 2. The Machine. <laughs> hey, Douglas. What's the heading? <laughs> What's the heading? <laughs> just... The Machine. Hey, Douglas, have you finished writing the letter to the sub seven armed planets, asked Paul, inside of the 53 and OT4 base, sitting at the chess table? Yes, I have, Paul, said Douglas. Douglas sealed the letter in an envelope and, using his teleportation power, sent it to Staples to be printed and then sent a copy to each armed planet's leader. <laughs> Douglas 
sat down with Paul Woodson and began the game chess. Why is it that we are still Unit 4 and the core remains? You had to go to <laughs> Yes, I had to go to Staples. <laughs> this is going to be a long video, guys. I have company. <laughs> Why is it that we are still Unit 4 and the core remains? I mean, there are no wars or major power struggles in the universe, said Paul. You know why, Paul. I had a vision that told me Satan will rise and that the core may be the only resistance strong enough against the new arm until God wishes to return to the universe, said Douglas. The chess game lasted for about one hour. Devin and Deborah did I say that right? Devin and Deborah had just returned from going out shopping for food and supplies and learned about some interesting news about the three bodies they had in the 53N OT4 base. Some of our core spies have learned that Doc I've learned from Dr. Ice's old base on Pluto that he planned to build a machine that could bring people back to life. Yet he couldn't because of the amount of power required to do the project, said Devin, entering the room inside of their base's operations. What do you want to do with Ashes, Sam's, and Mr. Dave's bodies? asked Deborah. We still do not know why he wanted them to come back to life, said Douglas, putting the chess game away in a container. The core spy ships also found out that Dr. Ice believed that one of them could hold superpowers in their bodies and planned to use a mind-controlling device to use the person's powers to destroy the universe, said Devin. Then we should get busy. But how are we going to build a machine to bring back, bring back people to life, said Douglas. We were able to hack some of the files on the matter and took some blueprints of Dr. Ice's plans, said Deborah, giving Douglas the papers with the blueprints. This is going to take some time, yet if all four of us work together, this project should be done in a few days, said Douglas. Oh, is that all? <laughs> Unifor left their toys and began the construction of the machine. Two days later, call Douglas from upstairs, for the machine is ready, said Paul to Devin, inside of the underground base. Devin informed his older brother, and within minutes, Douglas gave the order to place Sam's body into the machine first. However, they had forgotten about a scroll that told that Sam had an evil side to her. The machine was in the shape of a rectangle with the control panel on one side and a see-through glass window on the other. Once a person is placed inside of the machine, the lid is closed. We plug this cord in an outlet and then these tiny bulbs will create energy pockets that will enter the body skin and repair the vital organs of Devin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this makes no sense. <laughs> Keep going, it's getting better. We have, we have also tested the machine on a dead dog, a dead cat, and a dead hamster, said Paul. Put Sam in and let's hope for the best, said <laughs> Douglas. Wow. <laughs> let's hope for the best. Just hope for the best. Paul, see, this is probably the best video I've ever done for this reading. Paul and Devin carefully placed Sam's body into the machine and closed the lid. Paul walked over to the control panel and pressed a couple of buttons to prepare the machine for its duty. <laughs> Devin plugged the cord into an electricity outlet and the order to start the device waited. <clears throat> Permission to start the machine, asked Paul. Douglas looked at his mom and then looked at Paul. Start it up, ordered Douglas. Paul pressed the start button on the control panel, and within two minutes, the machine had finished finished, finished its job. Open the lid, Devin and Paul, said Douglas. <laughs> Devin and Paul opened the lid to see Sam wasn't moving. I guess this machine doesn't work, said Douglas. <laughs> Sam's eyes opened and turned from the blue color she once had to an evil red. Wait, look, she's alive, said Deborah. Sam stood up from the machine and looked at Unifor with an evil look. Where am I? And which side are you on, asked Sam. We are Unifor, and we're part of the core, said Devin. Well, that didn't rhyme. <laughs> we are on the planet Earth 2 after Destruction Day on Earth, said Douglas. You're Christians, asked Sam. Well, yes, most planets in this universe believe, that God, believe in God and his return are part of the core, said Douglas. Then you can say hello to your new evil leader, said Sam. Suddenly the interior of the base began to shake and a cloud of electricity surrounded Sam with her hands in the air like she was causing this to happen. Say hello to your like. present. Say hello to your present for me, 
said Sam. All the electricity waves entered her mouth, and then she fired it out of her hands, a gigantic shockwave throughout the base. Ever Palpatine? Yep. All before was put to sleep due to the shockwave, which allowed Sam to find my father's body and ashes with no interference. <clears throat> Sam placed my father into the machine, and again, within two minutes, the machine had done its job to bring my father back to life. I finally awoke to see Sam have a small talk with Mr. Dave and recorded it on my MP3 player. And this is it. On <laughs> your MP3 player? Rise, Mr. Dave, for you and I have some work to do to help this universe realize that I am Satan, and I will destroy all those that oppose, oppose me, said Sam. Yes, MP3 player. This is how old this book is. <laughs> how old you are. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Mr. Dave took hold of Satan's hand and vanished to change the minds of the seven planets I sent the letter to. The rest of my team awoke and I told them what I remembered from a scroll that told me about Sam having a dark secret, but I did not realize it meant her being Satan. We are going to place Ash's body into the machine, asked Paul. Yes. Yes, we are. But this time, we'll be prepared for anything with our blaster rifles, said Douglas. <gasps> Ash's body was placed into the machine, and it took hours before the machine was done bringing Ash back to life. During that time, Unifor used their computers to, computers, blah, blah, blah. Unifor used their computers to learn that Satan and Mr. Dave were traveling to the seven arm planets to turn them over to work for them and keep the arm alive. <laughs> what is so funny? Fucking me. Chapter Chapter Three. Ashbeck returns. Douglas, the machine has stopped, and Ash is exiting out of it. Said Paul, tried to regain his breath from running from the fifty three and OT four base to Douglas's room. Let's go then, said Douglas. Douglas and Paul took the elevator to the underground base and watched Ashbeck Ashbeck Ashbeck. <laughs> And watched Ash Becca exit out of the machine. Where am I? asked Ash. You're in an underground base on Earth 2, said Douglas, entering the room with the hangar bay and the machine. Here in my mouth. <laughs> You're just having some hardcore problems. Are you going to create a shockwave and steal something? asked Devin. No. I don't know why I would need to, unless you plan to hurt me, said Ash. If we wanted to hurt you, why would the four of us build a machine with plans stolen from Dr. Ice's old base on Pluto to bring you back to life, asked Douglas. You four built this machine, asked Ash. Yes, yes we did. Is there a problem, said Douglas. Oh no, guess I messed up the timeline so much I don't know if we'll win the battle for sure, Unifor, said Ash. I think, sure. <laughs> I think Ash isn't going to harm us like Sam and my father did, said Douglas, signaling them, signaling them to lower their blaster rifles. Ash, I remember when we spoke last time, I t last time my team entered the black hole and you sent us home using a magic door. So, could you tell me what has happened that seems to be troubling you? Asked Ash. It's not what has happened, but what is about to happen that troubles me, said Ash. You built this machine and were going to place me into the machine first so I could warn you to not do the same with Sam and Mr. Dave's bodies. Also, said Ash. We already know that Satan and Mr. Dave are going to try to conquer the universe and are trying to turn the undecided former armed planets into planets of their own, said Douglas. But you still don't understand why I am troubled. While I have been dead and in heaven with God, I still had the power to see the future and saw how I could warn you about Satan and Mr. Dave. Now, I am not 100% sure the core will win the battle, said Ash. What battle are you talking about? asked Deborah. The final battle, said Devin. The defeat of Satan, said Paul. The battle of Armageddon, in which Satan will be placed in the fires of hell for 4,000 years, and then God will create a new earth, said Douglas. Great, then we just wait for God to come down from heaven and cast Satan into hell, said Deborah. I'm afraid that isn't how Armageddon works, Mom. We have to battle Satan and the arm until he does arrive, because God doesn't enter the battle until... And Enter the battle until the very end, said Douglas. How convenient. <laughs> hey, Unit 4, can I group up with you and form Unit 5, asked Ash. Yes, but what can you do, Ash, besides seeing the future, asked Douglas. I am, your, I am of your family tree, and you don't know what I can do, asked Ash. Sorry, it's been a while since I've read the scrolls, replied Douglas. 
I have this blue right saber that needs someone to duel with, said Ash. All right, guys, that's going to end part one. Look forward to part two coming out very soon. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye!